Good day, YouTubers. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from all around the world. His Royal Highness Mufasa says, Hello! With disgust. <laughs> As you can see, we have closed the gap on the hard stuff. On one side, we got to do this all over again. On the other side. So, the fun is only half over. So my next piece, I have pre-shaped it as per instructions to fit in there. And then there'll be a couple more. Let's just look at what we got here. Turn off the shop lights. <clears throat> this camera and all the lighting everywhere. It's really hard to see what I'm looking at. So there's a good blow up of the instruction screen. So, you can see there, <clears throat> that's probably the board right there that I'm going to put on next, or maybe that one, and then we got another sliver, and then another full board. <clears throat> to get to the end of that one section two part 16 and of course <clears throat> we you know can't say we can go past that because we got to do the other side of the ship to match it then we'll get down near the bottom which will be a little easier <clears throat> there will be a lot of slivers in here and uh, they won't be near as bad because they're not they're just you know at an angle on the end and not not a whole six inches of sliver so one of the tricks I've got is I've taken this um, pencil and taped another short pencil on it at 90 degrees. And with that, you can go up in there behind the board and mark it. <clears throat> Get a rough mark after you're just holding it there by hand. And that rough mark will help you before you go to cut it to get a better reference of where you need to cut it at. So this is something I've used several times here on these slivers. Especially when you get near a spot that's really hard to calculate how much you're going to have to take off of it without being too much. It's easy to be too much. So, like in there when I closed up the last few boards, I was able to get this in there and mark behind the in between the frames to give me a rough line so when I go to lay it out here on the bench I can get a good uh, idea of where that mark needs to be 
so get the lights back on we'll see if we can up another board here to help us finish out this step 16 we only got one more board on this side and of course this includes doing all this work in here includes carrying that same board line over to the very end where you have a few places where it gets a little shavy and you have to frame it or form it but for the most part you're still uh, not able to go right to the next board here in the front without finishing the ones that go all the way to the back so let's see here we got to get some glue out and I keep my brush that I use with the glue and a little beaker of water I got a real fine brush for smaller areas and then another brush I haven't used yet for real small areas So I'm letting some of the excess glue drip off of this before I come in here with the glue. I have to sort of pre-measure. I'm going to be stopping way back here. And I always like to get a liberal amount on the underside of the last board. That gives me confidence that this is not ever going to come loose. Before I actually put that in place, I'm going to pre get some pins ready here. Hopefully I hit that frame. I don't know. It doesn't feel very solid there. And I'm noticing that this is dropping down quite a bit. So I may have to put some dead wood back there. Yeah, it popped back up when I push that down so let me go ahead and get one in here making sure that's not going to come out now I can go back to the front here see about hitting that frame back in there you can see there's nothing actually behind it 
right next to the front. So, ooh, pliers got me. I twisted it through the plank board and in, now I'm into the frame behind there. Then to keep it from popping back up, I put a little bend on the pin. So that looks pretty good. As long as the other end here works out, which I think it will, yep. Go ahead and get one in the very end of it. Hold that in place. And then one or two here in the middle somewhere. Maybe in this one right here. That's holding it down against that one. And I need to sort of do the same thing here that I did in the front. This one framing member is lower than the one before it and the ones after it. So get this to go through the board into the framing member. So that's a good example of an easy board. So now we'll cut another one. And I just been get this down a little bit more you can see better. I just been holding it up there by hand and get my pencil. This is really awkward with the camera here. You can see I did that line to match up with the bottom of that angle there. And these will get cut off to expose that very center rib so it won't hurt if I'm hanging over later on. I can shave that off. The main thing is to meet up at that point up on top. And after we cut that in the saw, we'll heat this up and then we'll mark it on the other end before we glue it in there. So that's the process of attacking one board at a time. You can see how that's exposed in the very center. There's probably going to be some decoration keel, bow sprit expansion stuff. I don't know what's going to be there yet. But we'll just keep bringing them boards up one at a time. So what did I work on yesterday? Oh, I got my photo eye that we'll put in the circuit on this chicken door actuator. What did I work on yesterday? <laughs> Well, you can't have a chicken coop without an egg box. 
So, got a little latch there to keep the possums and the raccoons from getting in here. And four nesting boxes for the chickens. And then inside here, I was at Home Depot the other day just getting some U nails and stuff for this rat wire. So I got to dig the rat wire in the ground around the outside of this and nail it onto that bottom frame. But while I was there at Home Depot, they had some of those. Uh, throwaway boards that they put in the trash for separating the big piles of wood and uh, pretty much three quarters of all the boards that are in this are either left over from the frame build of the chicken coop itself or from that trash pile I picked up yesterday of boards there's some of them there underneath and they just throw them away some of them are pressure treated and some of them aren't but i used all pressure treated ones in here and then uh it's got a, a ceiling on it so they can't get up in there and this part is just closed off i might use this for storage later on and put a hinge on it or something and then i got this piece of metal on the top so they can't get up there and roost and poop up the top of the egg box but that came out pretty good I might use this to uh, close that off during the daytime so they can't get in there or close it off at nighttime so they can't get in there and roost inside their nesty boxes and poop up because while they're sleeping they make a lot of mess and you don't want them sleeping in the roosting boxes so we will have some nice roosting bars for them to get on we're gonna use that piece there and a piece of pipe I got that piece of inch and a half pipe I'm gonna wrap it in hemp rope so it'll be easier for them to grip onto and it'll have a little bit of airflow underneath their feet so they don't get mites and parasites and stuff while they're roosting so that's the progress on the chicken coop this week i might work on it a little bit more because really the next thing i get, i need to do is start digging around and get that rat wire in the ground so that a predator can't dig up underneath here and then we'll do that same rat wire in the ground in the uh, circumference of the run so they can't dig up under the fence and get into the run and this will all be enclosed in regular chicken wire we got to run on this side too so a lot of digging ahead <clears throat> i'm not looking forward to the digging part but in the meantime man just a couple days look at that squash this garden is booming So let me turn on my heating iron and mark up and cut a few more boards. Okay, we're going to try to continue on down on this one side. We got four more boards on yesterday. Took us from that filling in that spot there all the way down to here. So, <clears throat> of 
course I went out and worked on a chicken coop. So what I'm doing now is positioning this with a little bit too much sticking out on this side. And then coming over here where my seam's gonna be. Marking that point cut. And we got another one ready for behind that. And because that board is going to have a pin on the very end of it in that frame member, the main thing I want to do is shape the ends of it so it's not wide when I put the pin in there and it splits, it's going to get wider. That way when we go across to the next board, can see there how it dives in where the seam is at so when the next board lays on there it's not sticking up pushing it away from it so now let's uh, put the glue to it We know it's going to stop on this one right here. And like always, use the rest of the glue on the brush to scrape off a little bit. Onto that board below it, so you have something to stick to other than just the frame member. Should be good. Now we we'll get a pin ready. And we're pretty confident that this end is going to be in the right spot. It won't hurt to do it first because we made it a little long on the front. Yeah, that split big time. Of course, we'll be sanding this up. We pull all the pins out, get all the rest of the planking on. Should be able to go down this one, skip one. And because that one is sucked in from the where this one at, I want to try to bend the pin over so it 
can't slide up through the board. Snoop Dogg is out. That's the neighbor's dog. They call him Snoopy. So that being pre-bent, it's hugging that pretty good. Probably wouldn't hurt to have one in that frame member because that goes way in. getting enough pins in the way it's hard to get the rag in there but I'm gonna yeah we need one there too If you see it bowing off the frame any, that glue is not going to work if it ain't touching the wood. Okay, so before we do the next one, <clears throat> which we'll be cutting off back here instead of up here, we want to carry this line onto the end. And that's pretty cut and dry. <clears throat> the boards are wanting to go straight. show you what I mean here when we put that one on there you can see how we've got to pull it in like that and it's even worse down on this end but that is very minimal especially if you're gluing and pinning it if it gets too much then we have to uh, shape that board so it will lay in there straight. Now in the uh, instructions, get you guys zoomed in here and then we'll shut the lights off in the shop. His Royal Highness Mufasa is in there sleeping. So, oops, get you zoomed back in there. So, I'm going ahead in the plans a little bit to to make sure I'm doing this front right. I know that we're using full boards everywhere else pretty much, but once we left that point where we left off the day before yesterday, and we did four more yesterday, 
we're right out. We're we're still way up here. But you can see these are all full boards. So there's no reason to change our tactic until we get down to the slivers in the very bottom. So that's why I'm just uh, preheating and pre-bending. You can see the bend is not very much compared to the ones up here, which are bent quite a bit. The bend is getting less and less as we go down toward the keel. And that's our plan of attack. So I'm going to go ahead and glue up this next piece and pin it in there. So the story behind this photograph is a went to a museum in Dade City, Florida. That's sort of an interactive museum. They had some uh, stuff there going back to the 1940s that uh, represented what America was like, the schoolhouse and church and all the different places. And they also did a reenactment of uh, the Americans against the Germans in a real battle out on a little field in front of everybody. About the size of a football field, I guess. In the process of strolling through the museum and all the artifacts and stuff, I ran across this display in one of the sections in the museum and what do you know I don't know how long ago it was built but it's the same ship we're building now the Royal Sun and it looked fairly old I don't know if it's the same model maker or much of the details but I did take a photograph of the cut sheet they had down inside the display case and that was rather revealing because the model we bought from Artesia Latina didn't give us this info we could probably find this on the internet really easy but <clears throat> just you know because I was there and saw this uh, replica of the same model that I'm building now I said whoa look at that so I took a bunch of photographs and that'll help me in my build be able to reference to the photographs of the completed build and then I saw this cut sheet. So it's very interesting information here. Uh, some of the history, you can pause and read it. But uh, one of the things that we were wondering about was that the ship was outfitted with 112 cannons or guns. And there was a crew of 1,200 men um there's a little story here so please pause and read it and uh enjoy in the meantime get the camera out of my tripod here we did get a couple more boards on yesterday. I didn't do a whole lot because I had to go outside and work on the chicken coop. So in the meantime, the verification of operation and drawing up a little schematic of the electrical out there in the chicken coop, we're going to want to 
put a switch inside so we can turn the light on and it'd be a regular LED shop light and then or have the option to turn on a heat lamp in the winter time so we'll have the ability to control those and then a hot all the time receptacle in there that's going to operate this uh, system over here to open and close the chicken door so with this uh, hooked to a photo eye which we'll have to locate somewhere where it's looking outside and this stuff will be inside so we'll have to extend this so it can see the light outside and wire that photo eye in so when it sees the sun or it doesn't see the sun it'll turn that relay on and off in there and with this 24 volt DC supplying this actuator the relay energize when the photo eye tells it to and the sun is shining and well if you can hear that But it's moving real slow and that's what it's supposed to do it's got a lot of uh, torque so it can move a heavy load and uh, this would simulate the Sun coming up and the gate or the chicken door opening so after 90 seconds or something like that the door goes open and it stops and just stays that way and then when the Sun goes down That'll let the chicken door close. And we have two of them that are operational. So we can either use one to op open both doors or have an independent one on each door because we got two doors. So I wanted to make a schematic so I wasn't. <clears throat> Wondering what I was going to do later on and this sort of puts it in concrete and Once I move all this stuff out into the chicken coop. I got a reference to go by to uh, wire everything up And what have we done out here? Oh a bunch of stuff Started a uh, couple This will be one of the roosting bars. We can remove it and clean it, but it's got the hemp rope on it. So they get an airflow under their feet. We finished the uh, hardware cloth around the perimeter of the coop itself, buried down in the ground. And then we started, oh, I added this which uh, as the rain comes and hits this wall and runs down the wall it's not going to want to run into the egg box and then we added on this side we still got to do that side for the run we added that same hardware cloth down in the ground <clears throat> oh probably eight inches or more so there's a piece of the roll what you see sticking up above the ground the rest is below ground and then the regular chicken wire will be up here enclosing the whole area that'll keep possums and raccoons and 
weasels and whatever from digging in underneath and that goes all the way around especially around where the fence is at it's a pain in the butt to do it but it's going to give me peace of mind that uh, no predator is going to get in there one thing i did do to make my job a little easier because it's pretty hard digging out here was I've, I've got a tiller, a garden tiller I used for my gardening and stuff. And I took one side of the tilling prongs off of it. So that gave me a narrow cut. And that tore up all the roots in the dirt pretty good and broke it up easy. So you could get in there with a shovel and dig it out easy. So... We did finish it all in one day, but it was rough getting everything in and secure. So yeah, I'll take time and uh, pause the video and watch and read this because it's uh, good information that we didn't know about the ship. And next week we'll be back on this we're at the point in the directions where um, it definitely wants us to go to the other side and finish before we close this up here. So we'll want to do that, which is going to be several days, if not a couple weeks, to finish this side to the same place that we got over here. But everything's tight and glued and it's going to be on there for good. Thanks for watching.